That was perfect, Henry. All right, good news, a little delivery from Santa's little helper. Actually, this is my son's Christmas present that we broke open a little early to play with before this video shoot. But, uh, so I'm just gonna do a TLDR for people that are busy in a hurry getting ready for Christmas. We have a new camera we've built over the last two years. It's called Ember. I'm gonna open it up here. Uh, it's 4K, 800 FPS, all new body, all new sensor. Um, super exciting, footage is looking great. This is it right here. You can see it's a four by four cube. It weighs 820 grams, shoots up to 5K, 600 FPS. We love it, we're super proud of it. This video is just for Wave customers. We're sending this out to you to let you know that if you want to have this, we've created an upgrade path for you or upgrade slash trade-in path. Um, you can go include it in the email that we sent out to you today is all the info that you need to upgrade to Ember. Um, it's gonna start shipping in March. It's priced at $17,995 and we're, get, we're offering a $5,000 upgrade for Wave version one customers. So. That's the TLDR, and then um, you can bail on this if you're busy, but I think I'm, I'm gonna dive into a bunch of details uh, about this over the next probably 10 minutes or so. So this is a lovely box that Eric designed that you'll be getting soon. It's our miniature forklift. Okay, so development timeline. We started this, we thought this was gonna take about a year, didn't take a year, it took about two, we're coming up on two years. So we started it in January of 21 um, with supply chain issues, COVID nonsense, uh, just general chaos in the world. It took us definitely longer than we anticipated, um, but we're, we're closing in on the finish here. We anticipate first cameras will ship March 1st. Um, we have five of these built up that we, the flight squad team at FreeFly has been testing for about the last two weeks. And we've assembled a ton of test shots that we've posted on the website that you can look at that are completely untreated and raw from the camera. And then also these shots were captured as we were learning, tweaking the sensor, tweaking the color, like learning how to use the camera. So, you know, in the beginning, the shots were less good as we've progressed in time, they've gotten better and better and better. So I would re strongly recommend if you're interested in this, but you're, you know, wondering what the image looks like, make sure you go to the website, look at all the untreated footage. Um, I just want to talk briefly about what we're doing at FreeFly, roadmap, philosophy. So our goal, um, you know, we launched Wave a couple years back and it was about 10 times more successful than we thought it would be. So uh, when that happened, we said, oh, this is cool. This is a new exciting area we get to, to play in. And we set out to build the world's most innovative camera company. And so th that means the things that we care about, we care about pushing the limits on size, on performance, on ease of use. And so that's what we're doing. Um, you know, the dream is we're gonna get to a camera that's tiny, shoots any frame rate you want, the color looks any way you want, captures anything you want in any creative style you want. This is a step on that journey. It's definitely not the end destination, but it's a, it's a really important step for us to get there. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna keep pushing smaller, faster. You know, our point of view is we don't think cameras that create great images should be more difficult to use than a GoPro. Um, and so that's kind of the, that's the, the philosophy and the outlook that we have um, on the roadmap. So other things to touch on on this, at the, the trajectory at FreeFly has been to slowly bring everything in house. We wanna be just completely vertically integrated so we control all parts of design, manufacture, build. But we take these little nibbles um, because it's super expensive to do this. You got to buy machines and you know all kinds of tooling and stuff like this. And we're a completely self-funded company. So we just take little bites and bring things in house when we can. And for the development and build of this camera, we brought all the machining in house. So Charles and Dave, these are just a couple raw parts we grabbed from the machine shop before a shoot. Charles and Dave set up a, um, a five axis mill in our shop. We've been making all the parts ourselves. It's been going really well. It's super fun to have the tight feedback loop between engineering and manufacturing. You know, Charles runs into things, engineer fix it, you know, gets, gets feedback and things get optimized and produced really, really quickly, which is awesome. All right, so we brought, uh, brought everybody into the machine shop here with Charles. If you're wondering where we spent all the money that we made off the first round of waves, this will be part of it. We gave it to this guy and we're like, hey, can you set us up uh, the tools so that we can make cameras in-house in the future? And he's like, sure, give me a bunch of cash and I'll teach you how to turn aluminum into cameras. So much cash. And then this is what happened. And now we're making cameras internally at FreeFly and 
machine in our own parts is pretty awesome. What do you want to say? So this is the IO module. This is the top of the, the amber. This is the, the business end where everyone plugs their cables in. It's got to look great. So right now we're doing uh, op one, which makes this. It's got all the spots for the electronics and beautiful surface finish. So everyone's very happy with that. Threaded holes for clamping all the accessories onto. And what machine, like just for people that don't know about machining, what machine are we using? What oh, technique a, are we using? This is a UMC 500. It's a sort of the small, um, it can make things that are roughly that size, like a, like a football size. And we have this thing basically running non-stop making ember yeah, parts now, right? Absolutely, yeah. So it's making the, the bodies for ember, the lens mounts, all of the little uh, bits and bobs that make up the aluminum structure of uh, ember. When do we get our own F1 team? Hopefully never. Never? Yeah, it's oh, okay. like the best way to lose a billion dollars, right? Oh. And that the, the joke is how to make a billion dollars in F1 is to start with three billion. <laughs> uh, these guys have their own F1 team, but... I know. There's no F1 tech going on in here. This is, this is uh, industrial stuff. I don't know a whole lot about machining. I know just a little bit from living next to him and Dave for a long time. But one cool thing is so... Charles makes the parts and then the same machine comes in and does a bunch of measurements on the part to make sure that they're as perfect as this machine is able to create, um, which is pretty cool because you kind of close the loop on each part. So historically we would outsource machining to a vendor. They would make a bunch of parts, a whole bunch of parts would come in and we would say, you know, what is the level of quality on these parts? We don't know. And we'd have to inspect them and measure them and all kinds of stuff. And you'd never, so, the cool thing is this thing closes the loop after each part it makes, make sure it's perfect, goes in, you know, carries on in the process and, you know, we're sure that all the parts are going to fit perfectly, which is really important on electro mechanical and optical devices. You need everything to be exactly as you designed it so everything works well. Yep. So Yeah, that's called in process inspection. Exactly, in yeah. process inspection. This so is when a it's technical done term. making it, it's gonna come in with a with a probe and a spindle and touch a bunch of points that are equivalent to the inspection dimensions on the 2D drawing that Ian's decided to put on there. Yeah. And so, if the part's good, we'll have a green light. If the part's bad, we have a red light. We're gonna have to come in and figure out why and fix it. And if shit goes wrong, Charles got this car right here ready for a fast escape out of the machine Straight shop. Straight into the wall. Straight into the wall. Nice Japanese convertible. Anyway, this is just a peek about, uh, peek into making parts for Ember. Historically, we've done mostly anodizing on our aluminum parts. We decided to try um, a technique called Cerakote for this, which is different and allows us a lot of different color options, that kind of thing. So the first 200 cameras are coming in this olive green. Um, this will be just a limited run. I'm hopeful that this will just all go to existing Wave customers that want to upgrade to Ember. Um, it's got a, we've got an entirely new sensor along with new chassis. So the sensor is from a company called G-Pixel. Um, Characteristics of the sensor, it's been overall really low drama and really clean. The lows and the shadows are very, very clean. We've been super excited about that. Um, it's had a little bit of fixed pattern noise from time to time that we've noticed, but not, you know, not bad. Dynamic range is better than Wave V1 and obviously shoots higher frame rates um, and is 5K. So, uh, you know, but, but talking about image quality is really tough. We shot a ton of sample footage. I recommend you go look at that. If you want to see other shots that you're wondering how it'll perform, um, definitely let us know. This is not, you know, this is a high speed camera with a global shutter and there's a bunch of limitations. Unfortunately, they still go along with that right now. I think in the future we'll be able to have the best of both worlds where you have color that looks like a Venice 2 or a, an Alexa and to be able to shoot a thousand FPS, but currently with sensor technology, that's not where we're at, but you know, this really does look fantastic. Um, Ansel and Hugh and Henry have been running around with it and I basically can't pry my camera out of their hands because they're so excited to shoot with it. Um, let's see, other important things to touch on, Apple ProRes codec. So this is the fastest camera to ever use Apple ProRes. Um, we chose that because it's a good blend of image quality, ease of use, and data rate optimization. Um, so that's been really nice. You just 
plug into the USB-C, grab the clips off, off you go. Uh, we've got a couple different builds and we've got a whole ton of ecosystem and accessory that we built for this thing. So the cool thing is got NATO rail that you can add on on all the sides and that gives you all different kinds of options to add anything on. So this is kind of like a lightweight package using an iPad as the monitor. And then this is like a bigger cinema version with longer runtime using our SL4 and this new um, power hub that we developed for this product. So this will be something that we launch about the same time the camera launches. Um, all this stuff is available on the web store and the link that we sent you. So one thing I love is in the spirit of um, simplicity, we decided to make the camera body really minimal, really small. It's a four inch by four inch cube, 800 grams, super tiny. Uh, well, actually just as a side note, I think it's really awesome that the camera has the ports on top. It's so convenient for gimbals and wiring and it allows you to have a build camera packages where the cables don't stick out past the back of the camera, which I love. Um, but the way that we're anticipating using this the most is with this app that we've built. So this is a live preview playback and edit app basically that'll go with Ember. Um, and we've got this awesome magnetic mount from Moment, holds your phone on there really, you know, really nicely. But then you can also pull this off and review and control wirelessly, which is a super nice option. So I'm, I'm planning on using mine just with probably the larger size phone and this mount as kind of the run and gun option where I just want to capture uh, high speed footage and share it as quickly as possible. So that's kind of the thing I've been thinking about a ton with this project is how can we go from, you know, capturing this hilarious thing to sharing it as quickly as possible. And so we've built this whole app. This app is available for download now. Download it, play with it, tell us what you hate, tell us what you like, um, try and envision what it would be like to have this workflow and see what you think. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. iPad will work obviously too. So we've got monitor, phone mounts, iPad mounts, magnet mounts, all this stuff, handles, um, D-tap, cables, everything you need to get up and running. You can, just like Wave, you know, we'd like to keep things simple. You don't have to buy a bunch of junk to get up and running. You can just buy this put an e-mount manual lens on there and power it up and you'll be up and running. As an example, this is the drone that Ansel's flying right now. Um, so you can see this is the super simple setup, super lightweight. He's got an awesome little quick release that he's designing for this. So that's another thing we're kind of doing as a side project on this. We want this, we want Ember to clearly be the best FPV camera available. And we'll keep, we'll keep working on that until it is, but it's pretty good. Nice and tiny, lightweight, fast. So where we're at in the project, we're, we've built five of these and we're in testing and testing and refining mode right now. So we're kind of, you know, issues are coming up, we're squashing them, we're building cameras. We're about to go into the first big kind of mass, mass manufacturing builds. We're gonna build 40 a month is the plan. Um, so really intense testing on the first five that we've built right now. Everything's looking good. We're squashing bugs as they come up, improving things. And then we'll really dig into building. Uh, we got all the materials in house to support, you know, building the first couple hundred cameras. Um, the first camera should ship March 1st. That's the plan right now. And then as far as what it looks like to upgrade, we sent, a, we sent all Wave customers an email. And if you want to upgrade, there's instructions in there, but basically it takes you to the web store preloads a discount for you of $5,000 off the retail price of um, Ember. I think the, the thing that was important for us is um, we would have never had the opportunity to build this awesome camera team and acquire all this technology that allowed us to build a camera that's as impressive as this without the support of the Wave customers. So we tried to, to make as aggressive as an offer as we could to make sure that every single person that wants to comes along on the journey with us and upgrades to the new system. Um, you know, I think it's a big step up in performance, usability, and you know, just overall fun versus Wave V1. Um, this is still Wave V2 in my head, but it's called Ember. And uh, coming up, I think we're gonna do a YouTube Live soon where people can ask questions and I'll, Shane will be there, I'll be there. Uh, we'll probably have somebody else there. Not many people have shot with this camera, just a few people externally from FreeFly have shot with it. So it's mostly just us that have used it so far. Um, so yeah, I think we'll do, we'll do YouTube Live. Uh, there's tons of info, info online. Um, you can look at clips. We've got a FAQ that we published. Um, 
you can book a call with Henry after the holidays if you want to talk to him and get his point of view. If you're extra persuasive, you might be able to get Ansel on the line or Hugh, who knows. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that covers most of it. Did I miss anything? No? Great. Oh, it, roughly 11 stops. I didn't mention that. 11, st 11 stops. Oh, I did miss something. Uh, sorry. Locking e-mount is what it ships with. We've been working with Kipper Tie to create, they're gonna make a PL mount, a lightweight PL mount for more like FPV applications. It uses even more lightweight materials than aluminum. And then they're also gonna do um, a Wave PL Revolva. So that's their version that has the internal ND that you can rotate, which is really, really awesome. Um, and we're starting to test the Ember in everywhere in our ecosystem. So we've got, We've got um, it mounted in this carbon. We're gonna start testing this soon. Um, Ansel's been flying it on FPV drones a ton. And then, you know, I just want to give for size. Just a camera that a little bit bigger people might be familiar with. I think that's it. We're excited. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. I'm gonna package up my, repackage up my son's Christmas present here and we're gonna get back to work testing and building Ember and we are so excited to get this thing in people's hands and see what they think. Uh, we love feedback here with good, bad, whatever, let us know. Have a happy holidays, everybody. Bye.